Hi, my name is Siavish and today I'm going to show you the family tree of the monarchs of Spain. We'll discuss the Christian kingdoms that merged to form the modern day kingdom of Spain. The kingdoms of Leon, Castile, Aragon and Navarre. In addition to them, we'll be talking a bit about the Muslim rulers of Spain who ruled in varying capacities from 711 CE to 1492 CE. I'll be using our new European Royal Family Tree West chart, which is available as a poster from our website, usefulcharts.com. During the 5th century CE, the Western Roman Empire was in a state of decline and its former territory was falling to local powers and Germanic tribes. These Germanic tribes had had contact with the Roman Empire for something like 4 centuries by this point and many of them had already converted to Christianity. One subgroup of these Germanic people was known as the Visigoths or Western Goths. It was the Visigoths, under their king Alaric, who sacked Rome in 410. During the subsequent decades, the Visigoths began to move into and exercise control over Hispania. They eventually formed a kingdom which at its peak around the year 500 looked something like this. On the other edge of the Mediterranean Sea, in the year 610, a new religion was born, the religion of Islam. The followers of Islam broke out of their homeland of the Arabian Peninsula and took over much of the Middle East in just two decades. By 661, the Muslims, as the followers of Islam are called, had defeated the Eastern Roman or Byzantine Empire and taken over all of their territories south of modern-day Italy and east of modern-day Turkey. In 661, the Muslims came under the rule of a charismatic new caliph named Muawiyah who founded the Umayyad dynasty. It was the army of the Umayyad dynasty that invaded Spain in 711, under the command of a general named Tariq ibn Ziyad. By 711 CE, the Umayyad Caliphate had expanded all the way to the Atlantic Ocean and their soldiers in northwestern Africa, also known as the Maghrib, took to raiding southern Spain. At the time, the Visigothic kingdom seems to have been in some sort of succession struggle. In any case, Tariq ibn Ziyad landed on what is now called Gibraltar and decisively defeated the last Visigothic king. Gibraltar, by the way, gets its name from Tariq himself because it derives from the term Jabal Tariq, which means the rock or mountain of Tariq. Anyhow, by 720, almost all of Hispania was under the nominal control of the Umayyad Caliph all the way back in Damascus. I say almost because there was still a pocket of Christian resistance left on the Iberian Peninsula, to the north. Here a group of Christians revolted against the Umayyads and formed their independent kingdom of Asturias. The Umayyads were unable to destroy this kingdom and it kept prospering in the mountains, away from the control of the Caliphate. From then to 750, various governors of Umayyad Spain came and went. The Umayyad Caliphate in Damascus was overthrown by the Abbasids and one Umayyad prince named Abdul Rahman escaped to Spain and formed the Emirate of Cordoba there, centered, as the name suggests, on the city of Cordoba. Abdul Rahman's descendants ruled most of the Iberian Peninsula all the way till 1031. The Kingdom of Asturias wasn't really able to expand because the Umayyad Emirate to the south was powerful and stable. However, in the second half of the 9th century, the Umayyad Emirate began to dwindle as it faced many internal problems. At this point, the king of Asturias, Alfonso III, started to expand his control into the periphery of the Emirate, making it the dominant Christian player on the Iberian Peninsula for the next two centuries. For this, he is remembered as Alfonso the Great. Alfonso also seems to have claimed to be the emperor of Spain and the rightful heir to the Visigothic kingdom. Alfonso's son, Fruella II, moved the capital to the city of Leon. Hence, around this time, the kingdom is known as the Kingdom of Leon. The name of the Kingdom of Asturias still lives on as the title Prince or Princess of Asturias, which is held by the heir apparent to the Spanish throne, kind of like the Prince of Wales in the UK. 
Over the next two centuries, the borders of the Kingdom of Leon and other kingdoms on the Iberian Peninsula kept shifting. New kingdoms were born as well, such as the Kingdom of Galicia and the Kingdom of Pamplona, later known as the Kingdom of Navarre. In 912 CE, the troubles of the Umayyad Emirate were brought to an end by the famous Emir Abdurrahman III. During his reign, the Emirate of Cordoba, later known as the Caliphate of Cordoba, hit its peak. Alfonso's grandson, Ramiro II, defeated Abdurrahman III in the Battle of Simancas in 939, thereby putting a check on Abdurrahman's northward expansion. Later decades, however, saw the power of the Kingdom of Leon diminish. When Alfonso V died, his son, the young Bermudo III, ascended the throne. However, he was driven out and later killed by the kings of Pampelona, who replaced the Kingdom of Leon as the main Christian power in the region. The marriage of Princess Sancha of Leon and, at the time, Prince Ferdinand of Pampelona ensured continuity between the two kingdoms as the following kings of Pampelona, who came from the Jimenez dynasty, were descendants of Alfonso the Great as well through Sancha. Initially, the Jimenez dynasty ruled all four of the Christian kingdoms in what we now call Spain. King Sancho the Great's three sons ruled the Kingdom of Pamplona, the Kingdom of Aragon, and the Kingdom of Castile and Leon. Ferdinand the Great inherited Castile and Leon and later proclaimed himself emperor in 1056. By this time, the Caliphate of Cordoba had fallen and the Muslim rulers of former Umayyad territories were divided into many local emirates known as the Taifas. There was a lot of infighting among them and their weakness opened them up to loss of territory to the Christians. One landmark victory came in 1085 when the city of Toledo was conquered by Alfonso VI, the son of Ferdinand and Sancha. The fall of Toledo was monumental because it gave the Christians a foothold on the Tagus River and opened the Muslim emirates to regular attacks. After this, the Muslim emirates appealed for help to the Almoravid dynasty in Morocco, who came to Spain and conquered most of the Muslim-held lands there. Alfonso VI had a mistress named Zaida of Seville, who was either the daughter or the daughter-in-law of the Emir of Seville. She is often said to have been a descendant of the Prophet Muhammad. Alfonso VI had a daughter with Zaida, who is an ancestor of King Charles III of England. This is why there's a theory that King Charles is a descendant of Prophet Muhammad. However, there are many questionable links in the chain of ancestors between Zaida and the Prophet Muhammad. We're not even sure about her own father. I personally don't believe this theory because even if her father was the Emir of Seville, the chain from the Emir of Seville to the Prophet is itself very questionable. Anyhow, Alfonso VI was followed by his daughter, Empress Oraca, who was the first female monarch in Spanish history. She married Raymond from the House of Burgundy in Italy, also known as the House of Ivrea. Their son, Alfonso VII, was hence a member of the House of Burgundy, or more specifically, the Castilian House of Burgundy. He may also have used the title Emperor of the Two Religions, referring to both the Christian majority in his realm and the significant Muslim minority, although scholars are divided on the authenticity of this claim. During the reign of Alfonso VII, the Almoravid Empire was replaced by the Almohad Caliphate in Morocco, and during the transition of power, new lands were conquered by the Christian kingdoms at the expense of the Muslims. Upon his death, his kingdom was split into the Kingdom of Castile and the Kingdom of Leon. However, this split proved temporary, as both Castile and Leon were inherited by Ferdinand III. Over in the Kingdom of Aragon, the House of Jimenez, which I'll remind you had descended from one of Ferdinand the Great's brothers, was replaced by the House of Barcelona. King Alfonso II's mother was Queen Petronilla of Aragon, who married the Count of Barcelona, hence changing the house of her son. Alfonso III's grandson, James, was married to Violante of Hungary, the daughter of King Andrew II of Hungary. King Andrew II can also be found on our European Royal Family Tree North slash East chart, which has more of his family tree if you're interested. Anyhow, back to Ferdinand III. During his reign, the Almohad Caliphate fell apart and had to withdraw from Spain, 
leaving their territory at the mercy of the Christian kingdoms and local Muslim lords. Castile expanded into southern Spain, taking Cordoba in 1236 and Seville in 1248, ending more than five centuries of Muslim rule in the region. Once again, the Muslim powers in the region splintered and only one managed to hold on, Granada. The Nasrid Emirate of Granada remained around till 1492, but it was incredibly unstable and there was a ton of infighting between members of the dynasty. The Nasrids made uneasy alliances with the Christians to the north from time to time and fought them whenever they had some free time on their hands from all the infighting. Zooming ahead to the 1350s, we come to a war known as the Castilian Civil War. King Peter of Castile was unpopular among the nobility who hence supported his illegitimate half-brother Henry as the true claimant to the throne. Henry managed to gain the backing of Aragon, France and even the Pope. This brought Aragon into the conflict as well and started sort of a separate war known as the War of the Two Peters, referring to King Peter of Castile and King Peter IV of Aragon. Henry overthrew his half-brother Peter in 1369 and established a new dynasty known as the House of Trastamara. The devastation of the two wars and the plague known as the Black Death resulted in the weakening of both Castile and Aragon. During these conflicts, England had supported Peter, mainly because of France's support for Henry. It was during the Hundred Years' War, after all. Peter's daughter, Constance, was married to this guy here. John of Gaunt, Duke of Lancaster. Because of this, John believed that he had a claim on the Castilian throne. To press that claim, he made an alliance with Portugal in 1386, which surprisingly still stands today, 637 years later. Anyhow, the grandsons of Henry II ended up inheriting both Castile and Aragon, and their grandchildren, King Ferdinand II of Aragon, and Queen Isabella of Castile were married, so the two kingdoms unofficially merged. By this point, Aragon also ruled the Kingdom of Naples over on the Iberian Peninsula. Anyhow, together King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella are known as the Catholic Monarchs, and it was during their reign in 1492 that the Emirate of Granada finally fell, and almost eight centuries of Muslim political power on the Iberian Peninsula was brought to an end completing the Reconquista. If you want to learn more in detail about the rule of the Islamic Emirates in Iberia, you should check out my series on Al-Andalus over at Al-Muqaddimah. The link is in the description. Soon after completing their conquest of Granada, the Catholic monarchs issued the Alhambra Decree, which exiled Jews from their kingdoms. Many of these exiles were accepted by the Ottoman Empire, who gave them refuge. It was also in 1492, under the patronage of the Catholic monarchs, that Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Finally, the Catholic monarchs did something that no one expected. They started the Spanish Inquisition. Ferdinand and Isabella had a son named John, who was the Prince of Asturias, which you might remember is the title given to the heir apparent to the Spanish crown. However, unfortunately, John died when he was 19, and so his sister, Joanna, became the heir apparent to both Castile and Aragon. Isabella died in 1504, and the crown of Castile passed to Joanna. Ferdinand was still alive and ruling Aragon, though. Joanna was married to Philip, the son of Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian I. This meant that their son, Charles of Austria, was in line to inherit the kingdoms of Castile, and Aragon, as well as parts of the Kingdom of Navarre, which had been annexed by Ferdinand II, who had also conquered much of the Kingdom of Naples. In addition to that, Charles stood a real chance of being elected the Holy Roman Emperor. Charles was technically the co-monarch to his mother, Joanna. When Ferdinand II died in 1516, Charles took over as king of both Aragon and Castile. In 1519, he was elected Holy Roman Emperor, bringing a massive empire under his personal union, making him the most powerful man in Europe. Huh, maybe the second most powerful man in Europe. Charles V, or Carlos I as he is known in Spain, controlled more land in Europe than anyone had since the days of Charlemagne, some seven centuries earlier. 
Along with all this European territory, Charles also controlled Spanish possessions in the Americas. Charles V abdicated in 1556, leaving the throne of Spain to his son, Philip II, and the Holy Roman Empire to his brother, Ferdinand I. Philip's mother, Isabella, was a Portuguese princess, so Philip ended up inheriting it as well, putting Spain and Portugal into the so-called Iberian Union, which lasted for three generations. Philip II was hence the ruler of Portuguese colonies as well, such as the ones in the Americas, East Indies, and India. It's after him that the country of the Philippines is named. Philip was married to Queen Mary of England, which made him King of England. Jor... Soris... This word. Yeah, this, this word. For the duration of their marriage. Now, Philip had a son named Charles, who was presumed to be the heir to the Spanish throne. So, no one was really worried about Philip and Mary having children and putting England, Spain, and Portugal into a personal union. However, Charles died, and so did Queen Mary, and Philip ended up having a son and heir with Anna of Austria, his fourth wife, who was the granddaughter of his uncle, Ferdinand. She was also the granddaughter of his father. Yep, Philip II married his niece. Their son, Philip III, married his first cousin, once removed, Margaret, and had Philip IV, who then married his niece and had Charles II. By this point, the inbred rooster had come home to roost. Charles II was a sickly man and wasn't able to produce an heir, so upon his death, the Spanish Habsburg branch died out. Oh, I forgot to mention, during Philip IV's reign, Portugal was able to win back its independence and the Iberian Union ended. Now, upon Charles II's death, the two major claimants to the Spanish throne went to war, known as the War of Spanish Succession. One claimant was, of course, the Austrian Habsburg side. They wanted this guy here, Joseph, to become the Holy Roman Emperor and his brother Charles to take the Spanish crown. The other side was the Bourbons over in France. Charles II had a half-sister named Maria Theresa, not to be confused with the Holy Roman Empress Maria Theresa, who came later. Maria Theresa was married to King Louis XIV of France. The Bourbons wanted her grandson, Philip, to take the Spanish crown. The War of Spanish Succession went on for around 13 years and ended with Philip becoming King Philip V of Spain. However, in the process, they had to give up some territories, such as Sardinia, Naples, Sicily, and Gibraltar. The last one they lost to the British, which the British still hold. Anyhow, Philip inaugurated the House of the Spanish Bourbons, which, under the reign of his son Charles III, went on to regain Sicily and Naples. However, after Charles III, the dynasty split off into two branches. One under his son Charles IV, kept Spain, while the other, under Ferdinand, ruled the kingdom of the two Sicilies, right up until Italian unification. Anyhow, the Spanish Bourbons ran into another succession problem when Ferdinand VII died. Ferdinand didn't have any male children, so the next possible heir was his infant daughter, Isabella. The Bourbons didn't allow female monarchs, but the Spanish did. So the nobility was divided into two, with one side supporting Isabella and the other supporting her uncle, Carlos, the Count of Molina. The latter side came to be known as the Carlists. The two sides were also divided over what the nature of the monarchy should be. The Carlists advocated for absolutist monarchy, while the supporters of Isabella advocated for a more liberal constitutional monarchy. The Carlist Wars, as they're known, went on for around half a century, and in some ways, the Spanish Civil War, which ended in 1939, was also a Carlist War. Anyhow, Isabella II became Queen of Spain and married her first cousin Francis, who served as King Consort. Hence, while the line went through a female, the following kings were also male line descendants of the Bourbons. Anyhow, Isabella II was deposed after a revolution in 1868. 
The monarchy was unstable for the next few years, with one king from the House of Savoy over in Italy and a republic which was dissolved in 1874 with Isabella II's son, Alfonso XII, becoming king. He was succeeded by his son, Alfonso XIII. However, after 45 years on the throne, Alfonso XIII was deposed by a republican coalition that established the Second Spanish Republic. However, the republic itself was unstable and led to the Spanish Civil War, which was ended by a man named Francisco Franco, a military general who took over Spain as Caudillo, or in other words, dictator. Before Franco died, he named a grandson of Alfonso XIII as his heir, due to pressure from both the liberals and the conservatives. Hence, after his death, the monarchy was restored under Juan Carlos I, who reigned for almost 40 years before abdicating in favor of his son Felipe, who became King Felipe VI and currently rules Spain. His eldest daughter, Leonor, is the heir presumptive to the Kingdom of Spain. Hence, she is currently the Princess of Asturias. However, if her father has a son, that son will then be first in line to the throne, not Leonor. Although it doesn't look likely, and it seems that Leonor will be the first queen regnant of Spain since Isabella II. After her, the rule of the Spanish Bourbons might end unless she marries a distant cousin or something. Before I go, I should point out that King Felipe is not actually the most senior member of his dynasty. You see, his grandfather, Juan, had a brother named Jaime, Duke of Segovia, who gave up his claim to the throne because he was deaf. However, he later retracted his renunciation, and hence his grandson, Louis Alphonse, the so-called Duke of Anjou, is seen by many as not only the legitimate claimant to the Spanish throne, but also the French one. So that was a look at the Spanish royal family tree. If you want to get this family tree as a poster, be sure to check out our website, usefulcharts.com. We have some other pretty cool charts as well. Thanks for watching. <laughs>